What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the G-Rat Show. I'm G-Rat. I've been saying it since Gundogan left Barca on a free transfer that this somehow would come back and bite Barcelona in the ass. And there's already a couple injuries, important injuries for that matter, in the squad. And then on top of that, Fermin Lopez gets injured. And now Barcelona's star summer signing, Dani Olmo, gets injured. He's out with a hamstring injury now. And this honestly couldn't come at a worse time. The Champions League starts. They're slim in midfield now. They don't have much squad depth in the slightest. And this is really, really huge. And to be honest, Barcelona is one more injured player away from, I think, being in a really, really scary spot. And this is why Dani Olmo's injury is very, very bad. And, and it's a huge piece of news for the club. And this is how I think... And what I think they're going to do with his absence in the squad. There's also two more pieces of positive news. Semi-positive news that we'll touch on after. So we will get to that. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I appreciate all the continued support. Let's jump in and discuss Danny Almo and this injury he picked up against Girona. <laughs> So to be completely honest, I didn't even see anything major against Girona. I didn't even see him pick up an injury. I didn't even hear about it until early this morning. It's a hamstring injury, and he's expected to be out a minimum of four weeks, and it can be up to six weeks. Now, hamstring injuries are very interesting because having dealt with that myself, it can take a long time to completely heal. He has to be completely rehabbed because this could be a recurring injury, and we cannot have our star signing. We can't afford this because we're already without Bernal, Frankie, and Gavi and Fermin Lopez. So now we have injury-prone Pedri and Casado as the two midfielders in the team. And again, shame on Barcelona because, again, part of me is fine with allowing Gundogan to leave Barcelona, but I also didn't really want him to leave because I knew there would be injuries and Barcelona knew they had to anticipate something like this happening because they had two youngsters in the squad with Bernal and Casado. Pedri always gets injured. You have to almost prepare and assume Pedri will miss at least like three to four weeks throughout the entirety of the season. And then you knew that Gavi was injured and Frankie de Jong was injured and there was no actual return date for either of them, especially Frankie de Jong. They signed Dani Almo knowing that he was a little injury prone and that Pedri is injury prone and they don't think to get any other midfielder for squad depth. It's just so frustrating. There was so much talk about getting Zubamendi or getting Kimmich or something and they failed to do so. And this is hurting us so bad now because... Imagine Pedri gets injured. Barcelona literally does not have a midfield because Frankie, Gavi, Pedri, Fermin, Gundogan's gone, and then Dani Olmo, they are all out injured. It's insane. It's actually, if Barcelona can not lose any of their next like five or six matches, this is actually almost a miracle. If they can get Dani Olmo back in the squad and not have lost a match yet, it's almost a miracle, to be completely honest. So what I expect from this... I expect Pedri to be playing the entire match in Casado. I expect Barcelona to line up exactly how they did to start the season. I expect Ferran Torres to start as a left winger. I expect Rafinha to play Cam. And I expect Casado and Pedri to line up as the two holding midfielders. And again, I'm not as nervous as I thought I would be. Because looking at the next couple weeks, to be completely honest, Barcelona has Monaco, Villarreal, Getafe, Osasuna, Young Boys, Alaves, and Sevilla. With the form they're in, the form that Rafinha's in, Casado, especially Pedri, and especially the Yamal, and Koundé, I don't know. I, I Part of me thinks Barcelona is going to be just fine. But again, you can't ever, you never can take any team lightly, regardless if it's the Champions League or it's La Liga. And especially with Real Madrid not entirely clicking right now, they don't look particularly that great of a team at this moment. They could drop, they essentially could drop points. I think they play Atletico Madrid in the next week or two. They could lose, they could draw, they might be dropping points soon, and Barcelona has to capitalize on that. So losing Dani Almo is really going to affect them in a different way. I would maybe like to see Pedri replace him so we can still keep Rafinha on the left wing and we don't have to waste Ferran Torres, considering he doesn't really provide that much. My only other option is who do you play and replace Pedri with? And I guess that's, at this moment, it's Eric Garcia, but I don't know how comfortable I feel with him and Casado as the two holding midfielders. So it's a very shitty and scary situation, to be completely honest, for Barcelona. So let me know what you guys think about this down below. How Barcelona gets through this, what they should do, what formations they should play, and what players should play where. Let me know what you guys think down below. Now next is, I guess it's some good news, and it's regarding the injuries. So Gavi has been back training. It looks like this is like today is his fifth or something training session with the squad. Frankie de Jong 
actually was training this morning too, which is good news. It's a step in the right direction now. To be honest, my initial thoughts with Frankie de Jong is to be completely honest, he doesn't want to get surgery and Barcelona wants him to get surgery. The way that I envision this going down is Frankie de Jong might find his way on the pitch sometime before the next, sometime before the end of 2024. And what I can almost envision happening is him playing one or two games, tweaking his injury or it gets worse or something like that happens. Then he's going to be out for the entire second half of the season. And then I can see him finally going, you know what? Fine, let's get surgery. And then he gets surgery and is out the whole next season. So basically, he's the highest paid player in Europe for two years and doesn't play one match. Could you imagine if that happened? That would be one of the craziest money heists of all time. If that actually happens, and, and I just have this gut feeling there's something with Frankie de Jong where I look at him and I just, I see a bit of a snake at times and it kills me because I love Frankie de Jong and I, and I think he's such a talented player and I can't wait to see him play in the squad. I just get this gut feeling we're never going to see that. We're never going to get it and we're going to end up never seeing him play under under Flick and losing him to some other team once his contract ends. It's just let me know if you guys agree in the slice, but something tells me that that similar type of situation could happen. Now Gavi, it looks like apparently like last week they said he could be good to go in like 15 days. So essentially like right now, maybe like an additional week and a half, 10 days. I would probably say, and from what I've been seeing, we can probably expect to see Gavi on the pitch sometime in October. And my gut feeling says they're really, really going to limit him in everything, in training, and probably not even play him until at least mid-October because they're going to want to have him on the pitch for El Clasico. Maybe Bayern, but for sure El Clasico because you know Gavi wants to play in El Clasico so much. He's that one player that always hustles, cares, goes into tackles extremely hard. He will kill for this team, and they need him in the Champions League and definitely against Real Madrid. So I'm hoping, I don't care if he plays the whole match, I just want to see him on the pitch against Bayern in El Clasico. And I think there's a, I think there's a decent chance we could actually see that. Now, Christensen, it looks like we probably won't see him for another three-ish weeks, which... Again, looking at the schedule, they're all winnable games for the next one, two, three weeks, to be honest. So again, it doesn't concern me that much, but I just, the squad depth makes me nervous and he could play in that holding midfield role and give Pedri a break if he needs to, give Casado a break. You know, it, it would make sense. He could play for Inigo Martinez. He could come in for Cabarsi. So I, I hope we get him fully healthy by Bayern Munich as well. And then Arujo, he won't be back in the squad till at least November. But coming off of surgery, I wouldn't expect Arujo, to be honest. I don't think he'll be playing until January. So in, in the defense is Barcelona's weakest point. We can see, you know, they leave players open. They don't mark up the best. I still don't trust Inigo Martinez as much. Sometimes Belde isn't the greatest defender. You know, it's definitely a big liability. And I think Bayern Munich and Real Madrid might be able to expose Barcelona's defense throughout the certain parts of the match and that's my biggest concern pretty much my only concern with the squad so let me know what you guys think about all these different topics do you think Barcelona can make it to Bayern Munich and and not really drop many points do you think Barcelona can beat Monaco and you know Villarreal and you know Sevilla can they beat these teams without Dani Almo and you know playing with a pretty slim squad so let me know your thoughts on that and do you think Frankie Young might pull a similar situation to what I described. Let me know your thoughts about that down below. Let me know your predictions for the Monaco Barcelona match. I hope that they win 2 0. That's my prediction, but I guess we'll see. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. If you guys made it this far, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the support, and I'll see you guys back here next time.